Hi guys, this is Emily Cupelli and for today's card I'll be using the Bubble Talk stamp set from W Plus 9 and the So Thankful stamp set from Long Fun. I started stamping the desired images on a Stratmore watercolor paper using my archival ink in sepia. To color the cute elephant I added some pumice stone taking the distress marker directly to the paper adding it to the edges of the image. Now I am blending it with a wet brush. I am adding more color where I want it to be darker. Then I will add the color to my craft sheet and non part of surface and will pick it up with my wet brush to eliminate any harsh lines I may have on my image, as well as add more color to it and make my elephant darker. I like to use a paper towel to eliminate the excess of color or water I have on the paper. Now I will use my Gather Twix Distress Marker to add a warmer color to the elephant. With this marker I will also add darker shadows to the image. I am using the fine tip of the marker to add the color directly to the paper, specifically to the areas I want to be the darkest. Then I blend it with a wet brush. I will continue adding the color and blending it until I'm happy with the result. I want to quickly say thank you to all of you since I just reached a thousand subscribers. I am really grateful for all your support and really really appreciate it. For the pumpkins, I am adding the wild honey distress ink diluted with water to the whole image. Then I will add some spiced marmalade distress ink along the lines of the image, which will add some dimension. I will do this with all the pumpkins I want in my card, including the big and the smaller ones. I am working with more than one pumpkin at a time. This way I give the color some time to be absorbed by the paper and dry a little bit. To add even more dimension, I will use my Gather Twix Distress Marker again on the darkest areas of the image. When it looks too dark or harsh, I use my paper towel and dab it on the paper to remove a bit of color. I am blending it with water and spiced marmalade. I will color all the pumpkins the same way, but you can consider the position they are going to be in the card to add more realistic shadows. Anyway, remember that a card doesn't really have to be super realistic to be enjoyed by the recipient. For the sticks, I will use the gather twigs as well. This way I minimize the supplies I use and optimize the ones I already have. I am blending it with clean water. I will stretch the stitch rectangle from the stitch journaling card die set from Lomphon. First, I will die cut a piece of cardstock but will not die cut the whole rectangle at once. I will only die cut about three quarters of it. For this, I will leave one extreme of it hanging from the cutting plate. Then, I will offset the die to the side that wasn't cut the first time, fitting the stitch marks of the paper with the ones in the die. Again, I will leave one extreme hanging from the plate, this time the one that was die cut already. Here you can see the difference between the die and the rectangle we got from it. For the second rectangle I will die cut, I will use the first one as reference to be able to get both in the same size. I will just place it over the die and will move the die until they are the same length. I will follow the same procedure to die cut it with my big shot machine. The stitch marks make it very easy to get them in the same size. Also, the piece of paper I used to cut it from was just a bit longer than the length I wanted them to be. That way it's easier to get them in the right size. 
From the second rectangle, I die cut some hills from my landscape tree or from Mama Elephant. Now, I will color the top of the hills using my Freight Burlap Distress Ink Pad and a round blending tool. For the bottom part, I will use the Forest Moss Distress Ink, blending both colors in the middle. I am using a dry paper towel to hold the paper so that I do not leave my fingerprints on it. Then, I decided to add some antique linen to the heels. I am adding it to the whole piece of paper. I will go back and forth with the colors until I am happy with the result. For the rectangle, I will start adding my tumble glass distress ink to the top. Then, I will add some scattered straw to the bottom. This will look like a sunset behind the heels. I have to keep in mind that the heels will go lower than the rectangle. To glue the heels to the sky, I will add glue to the bottom of the rectangle and to the top of the heel I want in the back. I will use my card base as reference to know how low I need to glue them together. I will make sure they are aligned and will press down firmly. This way I stretch the width of the rectangle as well as the length. Then I can glue the other heel to it. I am using the same die to make sure they have some space on the edge to put my elements in there. Then I will arrange them and glue them to the card. Now I will add some gathered twigs to the leaves and will blend it with my scattered straw and my wing of Stella in clear. This will blend the colors together as well as add some shimmer. As you can see, I also added some sequencing orange and iridescent clear, which I glue using my multimedia mat. I rearranged them all so that it looks like if they were taken by the wind blown by the elephant. Once I had all my lips colored, I added a bit of warm lipstick diluted with water to the ear and cheek of the elephant, which I forgot when I colored it. Now, I am adding some stickles in champagne to the center of the orange sequence. For the clear sequence, I am using the clear rock candy distress stickles. Then, I will add some liquid pearls in gold pearl among the sequins and leaves, as well as some stickles in the same champagne color, which is more like a bronzy brownish color. Now, I will use this stamp from Lanfon, which I received in one of my orders from them, and will stamp it using my archival ink in sepia. Here is another option you can use for your sentiment and a way you can fix it in the case you mess it up. And this is my card finished. I glued it to an A2 card base I made out of some Nina Desert stamp cardstock. I hope you can see all the shine on it. This is a great card you can use during the whole fall season and works well with different sentiments as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. Do not forget to visit my blog to see the full list of supplies and more close-up pictures. Here are three other cards for you to watch. The first one is a Thanksgiving card where I used the same pumpkin sun today and a cute little fox. The second one is a perfect card for a birthday during the fall season. For the third one, I used the same elephant stamp set I used today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!